Okay, I'm not happy. Okay. Both of my um, tablets tape different. This one, when it's showing the red number, is not, or the red dot is not taping. That's the issue I'm having. Just realized it. I remembered it last night and forgot it this morning. Oh, let me turn this TV down. Let's turn it off, actually. Uh, I forgot that it was on. <laughs> um, what I was saying that when you when you cut this horse, you have to turn the numbers upside down to cut him so that your horse is actually facing this way. So that when you turn him over to the right side of the paper, then he is in the right direction. <clears throat> Not all patterns are that way, but this happens to be one of the ones that is. So, if you want your horse facing the other way, however, you can cut him using the right side of your paper with the numbers showing up and he will be facing the opposite direction. Or you can make um, a reverse image on your printer. Um, I. You can print it so that the numbers um, would face this way when you're ready to tape it down. But um, the one we did yesterday, I'll show you here. Where did I put her? See how she faces that way? <clears throat> so they're both facing each other, and that's because... And I mean, I use the same type of paper that's kind of the same on both sides. But I cut this one with the numbers facing up. So if you want your horse to face that way, that's fine. You can do that. And then you can, you know, basically do two horses facing each other if, if that's what you feel like doing. Um, but the proper way to cut this horse is to face this way when he's right side up. <clears throat> Notice how this one became a he and the other one's a she. Just the colors, I guess, that does it to you. Um, so I'm going to keep a close eye on that camera because it should be taping now. So I'm just going to have a check on the numbers here. Yes, now it's taping. See this one... Uh, when it's not taping, it's got a red dot, and I forgot that, so I couldn't figure out why it kept shutting off on me again, and that was what it was. So now I have it set properly. We should get through this. So, we'll just keep going until we get her done. I will be taking my, the other video down and off of the Facebook group as well because it is such an abomination. <laughs> I was so upset with that one. But by the time it was posted and up on Facebook, I, I, I mean, it didn't do that to me when I watched it through Movie Maker. It didn't do that. But when I posted it to um, YouTube, all of a sudden, it was playing the same thing over and over again. And I'm like, what the heck is going on here? And uh, I thought, oh, too tired to fight with it right now. So I'll leave it. Um, and I will f redo this video today with you. So we are redoing the video because I was so upset with that one. And I didn't... I, do not want to leave that one up because it uh, looks like I don't know what the heck I'm doing when I really do know what I'm doing. Mind you, when it comes to you know going going live, I'm I'm getting frustrated with that, and that could be why. This morning I didn't even try. I was like, no, not even gonna give it a shot to go live today because it's upset me so much in the last few days that. No matter what I did, no matter which go live I hit, and no matter what I did with my tablet, still wouldn't let me go live. So I was like, okay, I'm done. 
I am just not doing that this morning because it'll frustrate me and then I'll do something wrong in the video again. So not doing it. So this time we are just, oh darn I put that one backwards. See, I just had to talk about doing something with going live and I went all wonky on myself. not quite on the line. It's not quite wide enough, but I will fix that with the next one I put down because number 10 is a wee bit wider anyway. So I will try to fix this. Um, you know, Nico, having your tail on my face does not help me. Don't you go play. Watch the snow. You like watching the snow. No. No, Nico. No, Nico. Nico. Fred finally goes down, and you decide to come over. Okay, so we're still taping. Now we have finished the stick part of the horse and we are going to start into the um, the gingham part. start now. now we are going to start with number one and I forgot to cut out the pieces for the the reins so let me do that right now so that I have them when I get there. Um, His reins, or should I do them red? Maybe, yeah, maybe I'll do them red. Do his reins in red. So I'll take a piece here, and all I'm doing is just laying it down just where it is, cutting it, and then I will cut a strip, and this one. Here to cut a smaller strip. <clears throat> and that way we will have both strips when we're ready. So we'll cut this part way. And then I will cut this one part way. This one, I want to make sure that one fits in there, and it does. So there we go. There's our two pieces for the rings. So that's out of our way. So we can keep on going now. And yeah, I had all, all my tablets were all plugged in last night. So that, um, because they were, you know, I was talking to my girlfriend and we were talking about the snow that was coming last night and, you know, she was saying she hopes that the power doesn't go out because, you know, at some point high winds are expected as well. And the last time high winds happened, um, 
she lost power and other friends of mine lost power um, up island but I never lost any power so I said to her last night well if you do lose power don't sit there for hours freezing to death come in here you know she's got one phone that she can plug in and she has a cell phone and I told her to keep her cell phone charged because she only uses it it's a special seniors phone that she has she pays a hundred dollars a year for it and she only uses it for emergencies and I said well make sure it's charged because if you do run out of power you call me you know like if your power goes off call me um, and you can come in here and stay warm you know like if if I don't run out of power but you do then don't stay out there and freeze to death or go out you know like she did last time she went out for a few hours thinking that you know if she found some places that the power wasn't out she could just sit and have a cup of coffee or you know be warm in her car kind of thing I said don't do that you've got good snow tires on your car so get in here you can stay warm here have a cat cuddle up to her. She was here visiting yesterday. <laughs> and Nico, he remembers her from when he was a kitten. And so when she came in to visit, you need to go. You're just totally in my way there. Um, so when she was in here yesterday, he was just all over her. And, and Fred was like, and you are? <laughs> And I said, hey, Fred, that's your auntie. I said, she's the one who feeds you extra food when I'm in the hospital. But he, he took us, he's very leery of people coming in the house. Especially, I guess after the last time, I think they kind of thought that maybe because she was here, I was going to leave. And I was like, I'm not going nowhere. I'm staying home. So... You know, he eventually came and he sat down on the couch with me and laid down on his blanket, but kept his beaded little eyes on her <laughs> just to make sure she wasn't going to take me anywhere. So, that was funny. But then he got up on the, she was sitting here in my chair, and he, so he finally, he got up on the, the table and started sniffing her hair from the back so she couldn't see him. And I said, just don't move. He's right behind just sniffing you out to make sure you're okay. And she said, okay. So she just sat there and Fred sniffed her hair and then he walked away from her and, you know, went and laid down on up his spot on the craft table. Maybe he was expecting her to craft, but she doesn't craft. So, as she explained to me 10 years ago, she said, in home ec, in high school, they expected me to make an apron. She said, I couldn't. <laughs> I couldn't make an apron. And I used to sew children's clothes. Well, I used to sew all my own clothes. I used to sew my kids' clothes. And I had a small business um, called Little Lords and Ladies. And I used to sew children's clothes for three stores in a small town near us and, uh, and and did doll clothes and you know dressed porcelain dolls and things like that and made porcelain dolls and <clears throat> sold them and donated them and all sorts of stuff but um, um, after my my heart attack because I had my heart attack while I was sitting at my sewing table and I was only 40 years old when that happened and it was like my granddaughter was born on the 6th of October and I delivered her and uh, it was um, I had promised my daughter like I told my daughter you're having a girl everybody was like no no she's having a boy she's having a boy and I said no she's not she's having a girl done that with every one of my grandchildren. I knew what they were before they were born. But she was my first grandchild. And uh, so I had a whole Victorian wardrobe sewn and prepared for her before she was ever even born. 
with all the little pantaloons and all that kind of stuff and frilly little dresses and things like that. And I told my daughter, I said, my daughter's like, how sure are you that this is a girl? And I said, I'm positive it's a girl. And she said, do you want to make a bet on it? And I said, okay. I said, I'll tell you what. If you have a girl, I will bring you a hundred pink roses to the hospital. If you have a boy, I will bring you one red rose. And she was a girl. Even had a fight with a nurse in the delivery room about it. That's how sure I was. <laughs> and uh, then when she was born, uh, the next day I went out and I went to every place that I could think of. I bought every version of pink roses that I could find until I had 100 of them. And then I showed up at the hospital with a hundred, hundred pink roses for her. She's like, oh my God, you really meant that, didn't you? And I said, I told you she was a girl. And you just wouldn't listen to me. None of you would listen to me. So here you go. Here's your hundred pink roses. Well, then the nurses had to scramble for vases to put them in. I don't care. I was that sure she was a girl. And uh, then when she had her next child, I said, well, it'd be nice if you had another girl. But I said, you know what? I said, you're either having twins or a boy. Because I said, I'm having a hard time telling right now. And, uh, where did I put my... Okay, look, you guys, you know, I know that the snow's making me really, really playful and all that kind of stuff. But you've got to get down. Okay, Nico, down. Down, down. So, um, yeah, so she got her hundred pink roses, and, and I, when my grandson was coming along, I said, you know, I don't know, I said, you know, when it's, when it's going to be a boy, I get mixed emotions between it being a boy, a girl, or twins. So I said to her, no, I keep getting these mixed emotions about this one, on whether it's a boy or a girl. I said, but you know, I said, a grandson would be pretty kick-ass. And so she said, does that mean it's a boy? And I said, well, that's, that's going to be my guess, is it's a boy. Because I said, I just think a boy having my first grandson and my first granddaughter from my first child. You know, so he became my kick-ass grandson, was his nickname. <laughs> and, uh, my granddaughter, her nickname, from the minute she was born, was Mouse. And that was because my grandmother always called me Mouse. And her, so when she was born, I automatically called her Mouse. And, uh, then her, her, my daughter had decorated her in baby Minnie Mouse. And so the nickname kind of just, it just stuck there. And, uh, so she's always been my mouse. She's like 22 now. Down, Fred. Go play in the snow. Or with the snow in the window. <clears throat> so she's always, always, always been my... My mini mouse, you know. So, and she always will be, no matter how old she gets, she will still be my mouse. Um, I don't see them anymore. Or they don't see me, don't want to see me for some reason. And they have their reasons, and I have to look after my health, so uh, if they decide that all they want is is drama in their life. I can't deal with it. I don't need drama. I don't want drama. And if that's how they choose to live is a drama-filled life, then they have to do it without me. I have never... My granddaughter has had um, a little boy. Um, I believe he will be 
four years old this April. I've never seen him. I do know his name is Caden, um, because she had she had told me that, um, but I, I've never seen him. So. One of the prices of a, you know, a family that splits apart. but I could hear him shoveling snow and I'm thanking God I'm not a landlord anymore with 10 apartment blocks because I can sit here now and do this instead of out there going from one apartment building to the next apartment building to the next apartment building because the when you're an apartment manager you're you are responsible for making sure that the sidewalk up to the front door is clear of any snow and that it has been salted. You are also responsible for making sure that the whole sidewalk from your parking lots, from one parking lot to the next parking lot, is clear of snow that pe so that people who are walking down the street, can walk down the street without falling, so you're responsible for clearing and, and uh, salting those sidewalks as well, like the city sidewalks. You'd think the city would do it, but nope. That's up to the managers. So, um, with all the buildings I had, it was, it was insane. I had, in the building that I lived in, some really sweet young guys that lived there and they were yelling off their balconies, Lynn, do you need some help? We'll come and help you. And I went, I would surely appreciate it. And I said, I'll pay you for it. And they were, no, no, you don't have to pay us. We just want to come out and play in the snow. And I'm like, all right. So uh, they all came out and they sh shoveled the front of the building sidewalk for me and shoveled um, up to the front door, then we had to go to the back of the building and shovel to the garbage dumps, uh, the dumpsters. So from the back door closest to the dumpster had to be shoveled all the way to the dumpster so that people could walk from the building to the dumpster. And, uh, it was, it was a fair distance, so these guys really helped me with the first building, and I'm just like, thanks so much, guys. I said, I, you don't know how much I appreciate it, because I've got nine more buildings to go to, and they're like, what? And I said, yeah, I've got nine more to go. And they're like, well, we'll come with you, and we'll help you. So we loaded up all the shovels and everything into my truck, plus all the other buildings had shovels as well. They all jumped into my truck, and... Away we went, and by the end of the day, we had shoveled all my buildings, and it cost me, I, I insisted on paying them because, you know, like, that is not right. And the company should have reimbursed me, but they didn't. And it cost me $500 to have all my buildings shoveled by these kids, because I paid them all like 15 bucks an hour. And uh, it was it was well worth it. But when I, you know, complained about it to my boss, he said, well, why didn't you put an invoice in? I said, why didn't you tell me I could? You know, instead of just letting me go ahead, you know how many buildings I have. You know, I'm the only single female... Um, manager you have, you didn't even call to find out if I needed any help. Nothing. You just assumed I'd get it done just like you do with everything else. And he said, well, you did. And I said, yes, but it cost me a lot of money. And he said, put an invoice in. 
And I said, and yeah, the owner's going to say, oh yeah, sure, the snow's all gone. Yeah, we're going to pay her that. He said, well, it might be too late, but at least give it a shot, you know, which I did, and the owner refused to pay it. So, you know, them's the breaks. But uh, I'm happy as heck today that I'm not the one that's out there doing that job. Because I don't want to. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to go from here. Is one ear. And we went up to number 21 here. Now, 22 looks like it's only this little tiny piece, but it's not. It carries down. Whoops, I went off there. I went over my tape. I'm sorry. It looks like it goes and stops here, but it doesn't. It actually carries on past there. So, 22 is actually this length. So you are going to go over a little bit of green, but that's okay because the green is behind. It is... Oh, darn it. Darn it, darn it, darn it. And then I try to do something with one thumb and... Oh, thank you. It won't do it. Okay, so 22. Right there. There we go. Same kind of deal with 23. It goes all the way down over 22. And I'm, I'm hoping you were paying attention when I put those red, red bridles down. I'm sure you were. This one went down just before number 11. You put down this one. And at the same time, you ran this one down and uh, got them both taped and then carried on with your gingham. Now, that was 23, so now we're into number 24. Now, number 24 has the same sort of thing. 24 starts here, but it also comes over the red, and there's a, just a little teeny tiny spot there that is part of the gingham. But you must take it down that, that far, because otherwise you just have like a little blank space there, and you, you don't want that. Not after all this work. Because <laughs> we do end up going to... What is the count here? Up to 42 before we hit number 43, which is the iris. And, you know, the iris can be whatever you decide. Now I need more, more gingham. And today I'm getting to the end of this gingham and I keep breaking it. Okay, so we just did number 24. Now we're going to do number 25, which is the same thing. It's going to come over top of that red. And now oh, come on, hand. Don't do this now. I've got through the whole thing almost without you doing anything really wonky. Okay, so number 25 is going to come right over. It's going to come up to here. There. Number 26 is right here. Six went wonky on me, so let's do that again. I'm sorry if my head. 
threads anyway. I just need to make sure we are on that line. And then now we are going to go to 27, which is over here. Make sure that we get that straight. down up and then we're going to 28 and again number 28 is going over that red piece so you need to make sure that 28 goes over Now with number 29, which starts here, it also goes over top of that red piece. If you can see that little tiny piece right there, that's why we need 20, I think that's 29, yeah, 29, goes right over top of there. And then that, um, tape here. <laughs> I put it there for a reason. I don't want to go off camera on you. And, uh, okay, so 29. I don't know if this will fit 30. Uh, not quite. It may fit in 31, though. So we'll do number 30. We'll fold another piece of paper. And uh, pieces do get smaller as they as they go along, so as they get closer and closer to the iris, they do get smaller. Especially on a pattern like this one where the pieces have gotten quite small now. So now we are going to do number 30. Yes, I'm still taping, that's good. I remembered that. Couldn't figure out why it kept shutting off on me at the beginning there, and then I remembered, oh yeah, this one's got to have the, the line showing, not the red dot. So. Okay, Nico, go. Go, go, go. No, 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 no. You can't sit here any more than Fred can, so you'll go down. So there's number 13. Sort of, but not. It may fit somewhere else better. It's not fitting quite well enough to not not leave a, a bit of a space or a lag in the paper. So I don't want to do that. So now this is 31. to number 32, which is here. Sounds like somebody fell upstairs. But I think it's just his chair. He's very noisy, that guy. There. And I have something to share with all of you, too, that... 
I left over on my coffee table and I meant to do it at the beginning and I forgot because I was so intent on fixing this video that um, I left it on my coffee table. But my mailman sure came early today. <laughs> I guess that snow, they don't want to be opening it much either. Because <laughs> usually they don't come till about 3 or 3.30 and he was here quite early. <laughs> okay, now this little piece that I've had fits perfectly at 35. So I will now use it because I don't want to... You don't want to waste any paper if you don't have to. You know, sometimes it's unavoidable doing these. It's that, you know, a little piece gets kind of wasted. But um, if you don't have to waste it, try not to. And I've got a couple more over here. I don't know if they'll fit. No, that's not going to fit. Um, so this is 36. And I know sometimes when I have to tape this way, I realize my hand gets in your way, but there's just no other way that I can I can do it. I just I've been trying to figure out a different way, other than having tape stick to the other finger. Trying to make sure that my taping stays to this side as much as possible, um, just so you can see. I don't want to to not see. So now we're going to number 37. Now where is that piece I had? It might fit 39 better, so let's do this. 't I just don't want the white gap so it's got to it's got to have a new fold. piece was just that fraction, just a fraction short. And we just laid this down just a little bit crooked. Come on. Get on there. Oh, darn it. Okay. I'm going to have to turn this this way so I can see the line. Put that one down. And put that one down. This one, put it down, and now one of these small pieces here will fit in 39. Right there. <clears throat> Oops. Oh, I cut my mat again. Darn it. Wasn't paying attention this morning, obviously. Okay, now you will fit 40, will you? Yes. You will fit number 40. Come on, take.
number 42, which is the last of the gingham. There. So that gets us to the end. We'll take these pieces off and just stick them on the board. over. Oh, I kind of like him. Oh, we have red tape showing here. We have tape. I don't want the tape to show. And it did not... Oh dear, where are you here now? the tape, lost the tape. There it is. We can find it and get it again. Get up with my tweezers. Now what happened here? Uh, you should have been taped here. And there we go. Put that back down. There. Now that should be good. There we go. So there is the green gingham horse. Now, I mean, you can use, you could use a piece of the paper from here for his eye. You have a nice brown eye. Most horses have big, beautiful brown eyes, so, I mean, that looks pretty. Um, how would he look with red eyes? Mm. He looks evil. Let's look evil. We don't want him to look evil. We want him to look really friendly. So the kids would like to ride him. So let's try this. Yeah, I like that. Some nice chocolate brown eyes. That looks pretty. Now I know that this one is a little smaller. But I have cut it a bit long, and I'm going to tape it down well, just to make sure it holds. There. There we go. So there he is in all his glory. Now, you know, if, if you're so inclined, I mean, you could take a piece of say eyelash trim or some other kind of trim and give them a mane down here and maybe you know a little bit up there depending on how far you want to take the, the the pattern you can do tons of things with them um, we could even add let me see if I have some up here um, hmm. well, I have some stickles that might work Just add a little. No, no, don't push mommy's hand right now, neat Fred. Add a little glint in his eye. Okay, if I'd had um, the little crystals, I would have put one of them in there, but I don't have one here. So, there, you can see that. It's got the little stickles in his eye. Just give him a little glint in his eye. You could even use a white pen. Didn't think of that, but uh, I'm going to turn them this way so you can hopefully see the whole thing. And uh, yeah, Fred's had enough of me being on here right now, I can tell, because he's just chomping at the bit for me to get off. And by chomping at the bit, I mean he's chomping at my arm. So anyway, this is how you do this. Now I am going to pray like crazy that when I put it into movie maker. It is not going to do the same thing as yesterday, but I really had to redo this one because I was not happy with that video because you lost like from number 
eight or ten or something, you lost everything. You lost how to put this on, and oh, I, w I was very, very upset, let's put it that way. So this one has turned out quite nice. I quite like him in the gingham, and uh, he, he is cute. And now he has a girlfriend, too, so I'll show you. Oh, hang on, buddy. I'll show you her. And see, she's, she's facing the same way as him right now because I did it properly with the numbers. Otherwise, they would have, you know, faced each other. And you can do that if you want. You can turn it so that they will face each other um, and put two on a card or you know, shorten them or make them smaller, and um, one of the ladies, and I can't think of your name right now, I'm really sorry, she has done some, and she's made them smaller, I think she did the, was it the oval, I think it was the oval one that she did, and she made them small enough to put on an ATC card, which I thought was brilliant, and she made them look like dream catchers, they were gorgeous, so I really like that, and Colette Corbeil has been doing really well with her patterns and she has even gotten to the stage where she's finding her own patterns and she has done a dress that is on the group page and she called it My Little Black Dress and it's a dress that I have done before. Sorry, I had to get up and get this. It's a dress that I have done before, and the way she did it was absolutely stunning. I just, I fell in love with it. It's beautiful, and I encourage all of you to do the same thing. The other thing that I wanted to share with you, if I can get back in camera with my with Fred here, is this beautiful postcard I got this morning. It was so unexpected when I, you know, heard the mailman come, I thought, boy, you're early. And I thought, well, I've paid all my bills, so I wonder what this is. I thought it was just some junk mail. And then I picked it up, and I looked at it, and it's like, oh, somebody has done this. And it's got, you can feel the texture from the tape and different things. And it says, hi, see you around the art bar, and happy Valentine's Day. And it's from Debbie Wooden, it looks like. I love the postcard stamp. I want to know this card hand stamped by Debbie Wooden. I'd like to know where you get that postcard stamp. That's cool. And uh, it doesn't say, what does it say on there? Debbie's from the U.S., but it doesn't say where in the U.S. But I thought, that is gorgeous. I absolutely love this. This is beautiful. And thank you so much, Debbie. You really made my morning. <laughs> I was just drinking my coffee and I was, you know, feeling all the different layers that are kind of on here. And it's just like, oh, that is really adorable. And I have to let you know, this is the first Valentine's anything I have received in many, many years. Um... I have not received Valentine's from anyone for a very, very long time. Um, I'd probably say back into 2000 sometime, so it's got to be at least 19 years since I've received a Valentine of any kind. And I absolutely love this. Thank you very much. It's also my first postcard. So thank you, Debbie Wooden, and you definitely will be seeing me in the art bar. And uh, I got to try this. This is really cool. I love how you did it. And it, it's really, really nice. So thank you, sweetheart. That, that was very nice of you to do. And uh, you really made my day. So I hope everybody's happy with the rework of this horse. And let's hope that Movie Maker plays nice today. So I'm going to say goodbye for now. And... Remind you that creative clutter is better than idle neatness, even when you have half of a cat in part of your creative clutter. It works. <laughs> so have a wonderful day, everyone, and I will see you tomorrow, or maybe even later today, because, well, it's 2 o'clock now. This is going to take a couple hours to upload like it usually does. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, but I thank you so very much. And Debbie, thank you so much for the lovely Valentine. I really appreciate it. 
Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye.